Hi, I'm Matthew Stott and I'm a microbiologist that works at GNS Science and I study uh, microorganisms that grow in geothermal environments. You have microorganisms that, that grow at normal temperatures, microorganisms, bacteria love growing in high temperatures as well, they adapt to all kinds of things. Environments with high acidity and toxic concentrations of metals, even uh, highly uh, um, uh, radioactive areas, microorganisms can adapt to these environments. And there's, I guess there's a general term for microorganisms that grow in these environments that are not particularly conducive to humans, and that is uh, extremophiles. As you can see in the water here, we have oh, these uh, magical um, looking formations that, are, that, that represent where the water is moving. And so microorganisms are also associated with these systems. So what happens is the bacteria forms on the surface and then the silica encrusts a layer over the top of the bacteria and the bacteria come on the surface again and, then, and so you form these long feather-like structures. So we've walked up the uh, stream just a little bit further and the uh, water's getting hotter as you can tell by the, uh, the steam that's floating around. And if you have a look in the, in the water body here you'll see there's a, a variety of colours including whites, pinks, oranges and some green. And what that usually represents is uh, different temperatures of the water. So where the water is green we have photosynthetic bugs and the water is slightly cooler so around about 50 degrees. As the temperature increases the photosynthetic microorganisms can't grow anymore and so you end up with some pink coloured microorganisms and they grow around about 60 to 70 degrees and then as the temperature increases even further you start getting whites and then some greys where there's very little microorganisms. So this is actually a shelf of silica here and you certainly wouldn't walk onto it because it's only a, it's a layer about two or three centimetres thick. If you do a cross section of this silica uh, under the electron microscope it's just covered in it looks like honeycomb. There's that many bugs in the silica. There's two ways in which we study our hot springs and, and the microorganisms that grow within these hot springs. The first is to extract DNA from the environment and then we use that DNA to identify the microorganisms or we take water from the environment and we inoculate them into a bottle or a vessel in the lab and we can grow the microorganisms in the lab. And so I have a bottle here that was used to grow microorganisms and you can see it's a lovely yellow colour and if you have a look at that, this, this bottle here and then look at the terraces over the back of my shoulder, you can see they're almost the same colour so it's a, it's a fairly reasonable bet to say that the microorganisms growing within this bottle are also the ones that make this lovely yellow colour here on the terrace. So, so here we are at the uh, source of a, um, the geothermal system at Wairaki Terraces. The water is coming out of the ground at 104 degrees. Uh, this pool is nice and warm, uh, balmy 95 degrees and there's already microorganisms growing within this hot spring. The formations you see on the edge of the surface here is where water loaded full of silica splashes onto the rocks and then evaporates and you're left with a little silica layer. And they form these almost like fingers coming out of the ground. Um, um, they're called sinta or some people call them land coral. Where do these microorganisms come from? This hot spring is at a hundred or just under 100 degrees Celsius and yet microorganisms readily flourish in this environment. So it begs the question, are these microorganisms representative of what was the primordial soup three billion years ago, um, perhaps this is, could be what the environment looked like at that time.